S proteins. We could go into so much more detail, but I don't want to. I want you to watch the animation so you can see how they work. But basically, so these are here, and I'm going to put this in parentheses uh, because it's not really a consumable or changed part of the reaction, but I'm going, I, I included it in the, uh, when I wrote these out instead of drew the diagrams, or instead of me drawing the diagrams. So all of those taxis, this is their def destination, all NADH, all FADH2, much less FADH2. Okay? There's also, oh look, oxygen, the final electron acceptor. And ADP plus P sub I. Okay? So what we have here then is what goes in. We have ETS proteins, not really part of the reaction, but I always include them. All the NADH, all the FADH2, ADP plus P sub I, and oxygen. Okay, so what happens? And this gets a little complicated. So the hydrogen ions themselves, this is oxidized, and they are pumped outside this membrane. So basically there's more hydrogen ions outside than inside. This sets up an energy gradient. The electrons move through the electron transport chain. Okay? So this H represents electrons and, uh, and hydrogen ions. Okay? So the hydrogens are pumped out, the hydrogen ions, and the electrons move through the electron transport chain. At the end of the electron transport chain, okay, so, oh, so once they, the taxis have given up their passengers, they're back to this, okay? So now that's the end, an end product. These hydrogens, so hydrogen ions, plus O2 is going to yield water, okay? It is not that simple, okay? First there's H2O2, or peroxide, and then there's water, but I don't want to get into all of the details. Oh, and these hydrogen, I, I mean, oh, these are the electrons and the hydrogen ions here. So these two, these two are going to make the water. There's energy released as the hydrogens go through what's called ATP synthase. That's this particular enzyme. And we get lots of ATP. And this ATP is by oxidative phosphorylation because of the role of oxygen here. It's not substrate level phosphorylation. It's not phosphates that came off of intermediates, but it's because there are free phosphates, because ATP is always being used, that are, they're plentiful to put ATP back together. Okay, so this starts here, glycolysis, to prep for the citric acid cycle or Krebs cycle to the citric acid or Krebs cycle to the ETS. Notice that all the glucose is gone by the end of the citric acid cycle. The only thing we have, the only remnants are the electrons and the hydrogen ions that go to the ETS and that is where most of the ATP comes from. Fermentation See if I can fit it here. And I'm going to add, what's the color I haven't used? I guess this orange. I'm going to show 
intermediates and not because there aren't intermediates in these others but because I need to show you something important about them. Watch this. Okay, what do I have here? I have glucose. What am I going to do with the glucose? I'm going to break it down. I'm going to use two ATPs. Two NADs. And I'm going to get, let's see, yeah. So glucose plus two ATP plus two NADs. Hey, that looks just like what I drew over here for what happens with cellular respiration or aerobic respiration. But notice that what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take these NADHs and they are not ETS bound because this is fermentation or anaerobic. So there's no ETS because there's no oxygen acting as the final electron acceptor. So those are now intermediates as are the pyruvates. Okay? Now, if you go into an oxygen debt, this is what happens, okay? So you don't have enough, enough oxygen to run all this, okay? Now, you're gonna, as much oxygen, oxygen as you can get, you're going to still run some of this, but to get you more ATP, your muscle cells are going to do this. They're going to take that, those pyruvates and they're going to make lactic acid. Two lactic acids. If we were talking about yeast, it would be ethanol. Again, watch the video from Crash Course that's uh, related to um, Khan Academy. Okay? What happens here? In order to reduce the pyruvate, the NAD comes in, or NADH, and gives up its passengers, so the taxis, instead of going to the ETS, give up their passengers here to make lactic acid. This is awfully small, so I'm going to have to do this. 4 ATP. Whoops, those should be in blue. Four ATP by substrate level phosphorylation. So if I ask you to compare what goes on in cellular respiration to fermentation, you don't say, well, there are intermediates in fermentation and not in cellular respiration because that's not true. But you would say, hey, ah, the NADHs don't go to an electron transport system. They reduce pyruvate to form an acid or an alcohol if it's not your cells. That the only ATPs are by substrate level phosphorylation. None of this oxidative phosphorylation with like 30 something of them. Two net, that's all. And then um, none of this occurs and there's no oxygen. Now, how are they similar? Hey, they both start with ATP, or ATPs and glucose and NAD+. They both yield ATP. It's just less. Do you see that there are ways they're alike and, a way, and there are ways they're different? And chances are, on your quiz one, or quiz two part one, I will ask you to compare and contrast cellular respiration and fermentation. Let me write fermentation here so everyone is clear.
So how does this end up on your test, on your part one? Where are, uh, how are uh, ATPs produced? What are the two ways? Substrate level phosphorylation and oxidative phosphorylation. Uh, compare and contrast cellular respiration and fermentation or anaerobic. Um, what goes into glycolysis? What are the substrates? Are the substrates here? Are the substrates here? Are the substrates there? What are the substrates here? What are the end products? What are their fates? Okay? So all of that, that is why you should draw this yourself multiple times before the test and you should include a legend and say out loud to yourself what is going on. If you don't do well with diagrams and you need to just write out the formulas, use the legend for your formulas because the same substrates and end products should be in there. Okay? So you do that and and that will be, that will allow you to answer the questions. I mean, there are other questions, questions about the first law, second law of thermodynamics, uh, energy, blah, 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 enzymes, all of those things if you look at the study guide. But this is going to be a big part of that quiz. Okay? So um, spend time with it. Watch the animations once I get those ready so that you do okay. And now I want to say, some of you have not been turning in everything. In fact, 11 of you did not turn in lab one. Some people haven't turned in a weekly assignment or two. Uh, I don't think everyone's done the discussions. I want you to do those things, and I want you to turn them in. And, the re and I'm going to extend the deadline, but take off a couple of points. But I want you to do them. Because if this isn't your thing, those, those of you that are not going into health sciences, you may think, why is this important? Why are you making me waste my time learning this? Because it is essential for life. Energy transfer is essential for life. Your cells have to have energy. This is an important concept in biology, and it involves these processes. So, yes, you need to learn it. And whether you remember all of it or not, at least maybe you'll remember, one, that your cells need energy, and if that energy flow stops, you, you're dead. Or at least the cells die, and then maybe you die. Secondly, you go to get rid of these CO2s. And you know what? You go to get the oxygen for this. It, it, these are critically important uh, processes in biology. Next week, we do photosynthesis. Without photosynthesis, none of this can happen. So another critically important process to have some understanding of, whether you remember it all or not. Those of you going into anatomy and physiology and microbiology, you're going to be expected to remember some of this, or at least be able to do it again. So hopefully you'll be uh, making some neural pathways that hold the foundation for this. All right. You can ask me questions. Remember the quiz is on Friday from 8 a.m. It's available 8 a.m. to 11.59. You only get 45 minutes, so you have to know this stuff to do well. You are not supposed to have your notes there to, to take the quiz. You're supposed to do this from your head. Okay, so um, yeah, right now I'm going to start uh, extending some deadlines for some materials that not everyone has done. Okay, have a great week, and I'll be back with more lectures next week. Bye.